Hi folks, John here. Uh, doing a wee video here of a, well I suppose it's a, a lock based dry fly. Uh, this is a, an olive hedgehog style dry fly. So uh, let's get stuck in. So uh, the hook I'm using for this here is a, is a Camazon. Uh, I know there's a trend recently to use more, let's call them funky hooks, but these are to me the best. Uh, 405. Uh, they're called a subsurface hook, uh, so they're slightly lighter wire, but they're still, in my opinion, very strong. Uh, the thread I'm using is uh, Semperfly uh, waxed in olive. So just starting at the eye, uh, go about three quarters of the way down the body. Uh, this fly would probably be done with a, a glow bright for loss. Uh, I'm using uh, the Troutline UV fibers. Uh, I find these, uh, they seem to uh, withstand the fish's teeth a bit more. Uh, so I'm going to flatten my thread by spinning it anti-clockwise and then taking this material around the bend just slightly. And then I'm going to form a little three turn butt at the back. And just unwind your threads and then you'll get the intersection point and just tie that off. I then fold that slightly back on itself and just secure it in the, on the far side of the hook. So uh, I'm using uh, elk body for this uh, from Rogers. I would prefer uh, rump because the is rump the right word? Yeah, the wee short one. I don't have it in this colour. So uh, remove a section of this and then take out the uh, under fur. We don't need very many for a tail. So uh, when I'm tying this tail in I'm going to bring the thread up to about halfway. Uh, so this will be the, the turns that's holding it in place. Uh, just take your tail fibers, uh, this is a, a Tiemco stacker, but any stacker will do. Uh, just level up those points. I always start off with uh, a few more than I need, and then any ones that are misbehaving can come out. So. Place this on to give yourself a little tail, approximately the width of the cape of the hook. Uh, these turns in the mid part of the fly is what I'm going to use to actually hold the material. And as I go down the hook, I'm lightening the turns again. Spin your thread anti-clockwise and light turns near the back. And this will prevent the the tail from flaring. I do want a wee bit of flaring so I'm just going to pull it lightly here just to flare it a little bit but that's it now secured. Take off that. So I'm actually going to, if it was 10 or a dozen of these or whatever I would mix up more of this but I'm going to do it live. So this is a golden olive uh, seals fur and we've got some, uh, any uh, ice dub will do. This uh, is a, a golden brown colour, but you can mix. So, per fly you don't need very much dubbing. So I'm taking here uh, about one quarter ice dub to three quarters seals for it. And again, with any of this uh, 
dubbing material I just put a bit of wax on my fingers and that helps everybody behave themselves so uh, just a small body because uh, this hedgehog style has actually got two wings on it so again don't bind down too tight at the back or that will flare the tail out and then we're going to come halfway up the body uh, off camera here I'm preparing another wing sorry first wing uh, roughly the same amount of material as the as the tail again these I don't really think it's necessary to stack the wing but if I've got any long ones I just pull them out and reposition so I'm going to set these on here uh, pinch and loop now I am not necessarily right on top of the hook shank I'm leaning a little bit more towards me so as I pinch this down uh, it will come onto the top uh, trim this off uh, and hold hold it while you do that uh, I'm leaving I'm not going to tie the butts down uh, and I'm going to then put more dubbing on again only about an inch or three quarters of an inch and then I'm using the dubbing to tie those butts down so now we're in a position to put the rib on. Uh, of course, we're going to have to get this wing out of the way for that. So uh, we're only really going to get two or three turns up this fly anyway. So there's one, two, squish it down, three, I think four is about as much as you're going to get. Right, this fly does look good uh, also with the, I uh, just want to show the difference. So this one here was done with the, the sort of standard uh, UV floss, uh, but that rib's very susceptible to fish chewing at it. Uh, this plastic material is much tougher, so it maybe doesn't... Uh, Maybe it doesn't uh, just have exactly the same UV properties, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a dry fly, and most of this is outside of the water anyway. So I'm now preparing the front wing. Again, you can stack this if you want, but I think it, uh, it doesn't really need it. I just level up the worst of them. This wing's maybe a little bit heavier than the second one. And again, pinch and loop. Uh, but starting off with the uh, material slightly towards me. And as you tighten down, it will uh, go towards it. So uh, I'm just going to put a couple of locking turns in here. And snip that off into the bin. So, uh, just going to tidy up the head area here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to select an olive, uh, Dye Pickerick olive uh, hackle. Uh, this one here, uh, you get to know your cape, but if you ever want to, before you take it off, you can actually do this and, and check the length. So uh, I'm going to start, again, we don't want these uh, parts with the flu in them, that will absorb water. So 
So again, I'm not an orthodox fly tyre, but I'll show you what, how I do it. So I take my thread forward to about one millimetre short of the eye, and I'm going to tie my hackle in dry fly style. I find this, now this one here, I'm going to go back the way. Again, I'm not orthodox. So that's the hackle in place. Good long hack of this, so I'm going to just use my hands. So I'm actually winding backwards. These good quality capes, uh, you typically get two flies out of them. And then coming up. Uh, Just tightening up my thread. That's me at the eye. And then form a small head. And a whip finish. And this uh, can just be snapped off. So, uh, I certainly believe in uh, rough lies for fish's eyes. So, I've got my lollipop stick, which is usually stuffed full of other bits of material. Again, with, uh, with this uh, plastic style rib uh, it can really take the abuse if you were doing this with the uh, the normal fluorescent floss uh, it wouldn't uh, wouldn't survive it so I like the body well teased out uh, on the water uh, if it's a calm day you can trim the bottom but uh, I tie them for the box with uh, my varnish is hiding on me. For the box, I tie them with the full hackle on them, and then if it is a calm day or whatever, I can chop it off on the water. Uh, small bit of varnish in the front, but it's just there for security more than anything else. And that is an olive hedgehog dry fly. Uh, I would say that it's more of a, an emerger type as well because it has that sort of back look. Uh, colours, you can do this brown, claret. Uh, I've even seen them orangey coloured as well. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that wee video. Uh, comments are welcome. Thanks very much.